Jinx, the chaotic Harley Quinn of the League of Legends universe, who also happens to be a loose cannon with a knack for marksmanship. Before she became such an unhinged, hectic individual, she was known as Powder, a girl with an ambition to fit in and help those around her. In today's video, we will be analyzing Jinx's character and personality from the series Arcane. Before we start the video, I just wanted to give a quick little disclaimer that I will be discussing the topic of the character solely based off of the series Arcane and providing my own personal opinion as I have not played League of Legends and I also do not consider myself a psychologist. This video is based solely off of my research and also for entertainment purposes. With that said, enjoy the video. Growing up, Violet and Powder were war orphans due to their parents being killed during a civil war that broke out between the thriving city of Piltover and the undercity of Zaun. Being a war orphan and seeing the consequences of a civil conflict breaking out would of course be traumatizing for any little child, which is why Violet had Powder cover her eyes as they walked through the desolate landscape. However, eventually her eyes were exposed to the horrific acts of war and seeing her and Violet's mother and father dead did a number on her psyche, as it would anyone. As the years pass, Violet and Powder did what they could in order to survive, which involved living a life of crime due to how most of the life in the underground city of Zon was. Obviously, Powder and Violet did not have the best childhood experiences growing up. There are two types of traumatic experiences that fit Powder's character. First is the most obvious one, a young girl being exposed to the horrific acts of war, and the other being system-induced trauma which is the traumatic removal from the home, traumatic foster placement, sibling separation, or multiple placements in a short amount of time. Not only did Powder's mother and father die, but she was ripped from her home, met a stranger who took her in as a foster father, always feeling scared, powerless without being by her sister's side, and also converting to different places for survival. These types of experiences exposed early on as a child develops contribute to the developmental stages within their life and, in turn, can shape their personality. Speaking of sibling separation, it is no surprise to see that Powder exhibits clear symptoms of separation anxiety disorder. Separation anxiety is a normal stage of development among young children, but most outgrow separation anxiety by the time they turn about three years of age. If separation anxiety has affected an individual within a prolonged period of time, this generally can lead to more intense feelings of separation, such as causing panic attacks. Usually this is in relation to the child's parents, but it could also relate to another individual that the child has a strong attachment to. In the case of Powder, it would be to her bond with her sister, Violet. When Powder is told that she cannot join her sister and friends and be of use when they go on the mission to save Vander, she feels helpless, useless, angry, and she is fearful, scared of being abandoned. She literally has a full blown out panic attack and due to this, lashes out on not only herself, but the things that she takes pride in. Remember the bombs that Powder would create? These are the things that she cherishes dearly because it gives her the hope that it will be useful to benefiting and helping her group of friends, her sister included. However, in her fit of rage, she ends up breaking them due to how useless she feels. Once she realizes how she could be of use, her tears automatically stop, and she immediately feels that she can help. Fast forward to the aftermath between Vander and Silco, when Powder sees Violet, even after the destruction she caused, she vocalizes how happy she is that her bomb finally worked, hoping to hear that acknowledgement from her sister, the acknowledgement of feeling good enough and making her sister proud. It's important to note that when children are growing up, it is very important for their own self-development and self esteem that they receive positive affirmation. Milo's wrong, Powder. You're stronger than you think. Through this, you are giving a child powerful words that can contribute to their growth and overall mindset of who they truly can become and what they can accomplish. As opposed to of you giving a child negative affirmation, they will feel very negatively about themselves and could make it difficult for the child to interact later in life. Within the case of Violet and Powder, Violet strikes Powder and even though Powder only wanted to help, she finally realizes what she has done and now has to live with the guilt of losing her friends 
friends and adopted father. Before causing more harm to Powder, Violet leaves to separate herself from her before she ends up causing more damage to her sister, so she leaves temporarily, needing to take a break. While Violet is behind the corner in this scene, Powder takes it as Violet has officially abandoned her and left her all alone. That is when Silco eventually shows up and Powder jumps in his arms looking for that comfort. This just further showcases that Powder cannot handle being alone. She wants to feel the warmth and acknowledgement from someone. So, in her eyes, after losing Vander and now her sister, she now immediately attaches herself to the closest thing. When we see the look in her eye at the end of the scene, her eyes give a look that screams, I will prove you wrong. I am no jinx. I am useful you will see. Through life, humans have various ways on how they deal with their overall mental state. A good example of this would be depression. There are those out there who would rather openly speak about their feelings, searching for support in order for them to feel better about a particular event that has occurred through their life or their overall sense of self. Then there are those individuals who take a more stoic approach. Individuals that do not speak on the matter of how they truly are feeling and do not wish to share what they are currently going through in order to really just be perceived as stronger than who they really are, or to not make those they care about worry about them. In simpler terms, these are examples of venting and seeking support, otherwise known as coping. Coping is defined as the thoughts and behaviors mobilized to manage internal and external stressful situations. It is a term used distinctively for conscious and voluntary mobilization of acts different from defense mechanisms that are subconsciously or unconscious adaptive responses, both of which aim to reduce or tolerate stress. For Powder, she has several forms of coping mechanisms due to the events that have transpired throughout her life. One of her forms of coping in dealing with loss is making dolls that take on the image of her friends, Milo and Clagger, sometimes even talking to them. You can actually see those replicas when she is in her laboratory working on her gadgets. I would also go on to say that Jinx has schizophrenia, to be more specific, paranoid schizophrenia, classified in the sense of having hallucinations, one of the symptoms of schizophrenia. For those that are unaware of what schizophrenia is, schizophrenia is a serious mental disorder in which individuals interpret reality abnormally. Various symptoms of schizophrenia can range from experiencing delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, or negative symptoms that include having a lack of emotion and not changing facial expressions. Hallucinations are classified as either seeing or hearing things that do not exist. Hearing voices is among the most common, and with hallucinations, hallucinations, they can appear just as real as normal everyday experiences. As we have seen throughout the show, Jinx has various scenes in which she is hearing voices in her head, sometimes so intense that these hallucinations take on a presence of their own. She is haunted by the hallucinations of seeing Milla more prominently when she has these types of episodes or even hears his voice due to the fact that Milo is technically the inspiration behind Jinx getting her nickname in the first place. Within the beginning of the show, Milo is seen bullying Powder every time something goes wrong and puts the blame on her, calling her a Jinx. When it comes to the voices in her head, it's not just Milo, but probably Clagger and her inner thoughts as well. Now, why exactly does Milo appear to be the one that is more likely to show up within Jinx's inner psyche? Well, besides schizophrenia, Jinx also has PTSD, classified as post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD is a severe mental condition in which that is triggered by a terrifying event, either after experiencing or witnessing it. This is something that most people are probably more familiar with when it comes down to war veterans. With PTSD, it can trigger flashbacks, nightmares, or even severe forms of anxiety, and even thoughts that can be uncontrollable, causing the individual to not function normally and act irrationally. The unfortunate effects of PTSD can be unwanted memories that reoccur on sometimes a daily basis, depending on if something reminds you of the traumatic event, in which case, severe emotional or even physical distress. Finally, another symptom can cause the individual to experience a lot of guilt or even shame. If Jinx has PTSD, then she also exhibits forms of self-destructive behavior. More likely, she engages in aggressive behavior to turn people away from her. A factor that can cause something like this is from childhood trauma. 
Like I said in the beginning of the video, at a young age, she and Violet experienced a tragic civil war that broke out and lost both of their parents. As we see throughout the show, there are certain triggers that caused Jinx to be reminded of the event that took place when she was younger and when she unfortunately caused the deaths of Clagger, Vander, and Milo, even though she just wanted to help. These events cause her to sometimes have mental breakdowns or either act impulsively. Some people might even go on to say that Jinx might have some type of personality disorder like alternate personality disorder. However, I would dismiss this as even though Jinx has taken a form of a new identity, it's not mentally contributed. She does not at random moments switch personalities. She has taken on the name of Jinx on her own accord due to believing by the end of the show that she is in fact a Jinx. With that being said, Jinx is a very broken individual. She has a wide variety of mental illnesses that contribute to her personality and why she acts the way she does. She is a scarred individual who has experienced a tragedy within her childhood. Early in life due to her trauma, she developed separation anxiety disorder, hearing voices, talking to them, and even having reoccurring memories of the events that led to the demise of her friends, blaming herself for what happened. This gives us a better understanding of her character and the role that she plays within the video game League of Legends. Arcane is an interesting take on the multiplayer battle arena that gives insight into each character's role within the world and their personalities, and I love how the staff in charge of the animation for Arcane is delivering and expanding upon the lore of the video game. So you made it this far into the video, and for that, I thank you very, very much. This was a very fun video to make and one that took a lot of research to dig through. I really hope you all enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments down below of what you thought of it and if you would like to see more Arcane videos in the future, such as more character analysis. Also, by giving the video a like, it really does help me out as it can reach more people who also like Arcane and maybe could benefit from this video. Finally, if you would like to see more from me, please consider subscribing as well. Thank you very much for watching everyone and I can't thank you enough for the support. I hope to talk to you all in the next episode.